Out here in Moab, this place attracts a lot of different kind of vehicles. People travel in all sorts of overlanding and off-road capable vehicles. And this incredible van behind us is owned by Chad from Living the Van Life. We've had an opportunity to meet up with you. Thanks so much for coming out and hanging out with us. Could you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yeah, well, I'm Chad with Living the Van Life. I've got a YouTube channel that I have been operating now for uh, going on 11 years. And I started living in my 1990 Volkswagen Westphalia camper van way back in 2011, really as a means to uh, become a professional photographer and filmmaker. I had spent 18 years working in the construction industry and needed a change in my life. I wanted to be doing something that I loved doing. And living in a van was a means of being able to, to make that transition from that full-time job lifestyle to starting over from scratch on a new career. And fast forward 11 years later, here I am actually living in a van, making a living as a you know, behind the camera, uh, out living van life. That's an awesome story. So when you first made that transition, was the van an opportunity to go out and see things or was it a cost effective way to live? What was the original intent behind it? Well, ultimately when it first started, it was a cost of, of, of living, mm -hmm. um, really allowed me to be able to afford that. But then as I got further into van life, and back then it wasn't even called van life really, you know, van life is such a, a coin term now. But back then it was just to be able to afford to, to make that transition. As I got further into it, I realized how much I had learned about living in a van, but not only just about living in a van, but the fact that it's taught me so much more about life. And when you can live within your means, live a simpler lifestyle, then that opened up so much more freedom. So then that's when I started realizing what was possible to be able to go and travel and see more things. Um, I think I really took my first solo road trip in 2012 and it was an amazing experience. In fact, I ended up out here in Moab and uh, that was really the start of really developing it into what it is now. So can you tell me a little bit more about the first van that you had? I guess, uh, did you build it out yourself? What did that entail and where did you take it? Well, originally I bought the Westphalia camper van in October of 2010. I had actually had my, my target set on that vehicle because of the opportunities it would allow for doing some photography road trip. Um, I wanted the opportunity to be able to get in a vehicle and that I could drive out to my favorite landscape photography spots, be there for sunrises or be there after sunsets. So really it was originally bought as a photography road trip machine mm. and opening up opportunities for that. It was two or three months later when this idea came across my plate of actually living in it. And so the fact that I already had the vehicle there and the fact that it was a Westphalia camper van, you know, coming from Westphalia, they're built out with the stove, the sink, all the cabinetry, the bed, the pop-up. So really it was, the foundation was already laid for me. And so it was easy for me just to step right into it versus somebody that was starting from scratch and having to build out the van. So of course you take that and you adapt, adapt it to your needs and little things like the propane heater and battery power and how am I going to charge my camera equipment as a photographer. And so it was little things like that that started expanding. <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit more about what you've got behind us. This is quite a change from the Westphalia. Uh, some might say an upgrade, at least a lateral move. <laughs> what have you built now? Well, so I spent 10 years off and on living in the Volkswagen and I made it work all the way to, it had 310,000 miles on it. With the direction that the YouTube channel was going, I realized that there was opportunity to really do bigger things with that and with a growing audience. And I wanted to get out and do bigger things. So I kind of started uh, setting sights on what was down the road and, and getting myself into a vehicle that was more capable more comfortable for a full-time living uh, and something that would get me out on bigger adventures. And of course the Mercedes Sprinter platform was, has become very popular and especially having four by four. And with my past in the pushing the limits in a two wheel drive uh, Volkswagen, I, I really felt that I wanted to explore what was possible in a four by four. 
So I set my sights on this and I ended up here with a 2020 Mercedes 4x4 and uh, spent the last 38 weeks building that thing out. I bought it brand new as a blank cargo van off of the, off of the Mercedes lot. So the, I see Mercedes all the time as vans that people are building out to live in. Why is the Mercedes such a popular chassis to do this with? Well, I think they were kind of the, the pioneers of building the bigger vans. You know, I think it kind of developed um, over in Europe. They had a little different form factor that had the extra height. I remember the first time seeing, you know, the Mercedes Sprinters in the States. It was like, what is that funky looking thing? It was just all tall. But the more people that adapted them to van life, they became more of a, a popular thing. And, you know, the fact that you can, you know, for myself being six foot two, I can go in and I can stand up in there and still have a little bit of space. I think that just really took off in, in the van life world. That makes sense. It makes it really comfortable. And you're four wheel drive in this, right? Yep. So the great thing about the Mercedes Sprinter van is that it's selectable four wheel drive. So you can turn it on and off and you can go to rear wheel drive. Um, and with that comes a selectable low range, nice. which definitely helps out here. So you're so. getting more towards something that you'd see closer to a Jeep or a truck instead of like an all wheel drive van kind of a yep. thing. That makes sense. Yeah, and there's other options out there for transits doing their all wheel drive and there's pluses and there's minuses with that. Um, those are great for kind of altering any condition that's thrown at it, it'll handle it. Whereas I knew I wanted to focus more on getting out into the back country, more of a four by four basis. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose the Mercedes yeah. over the other platforms. And I know that you've been pushing the limits of this thing already. Uh, you're gonna have to head over to his channel to check out some of the crazy places <laughs> that he's taken this already. But could you give me a zoo? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, jump into it and take a look. All right. So I'm guessing that fans don't normally come with a winch. No, <laughs> no. And I told myself when I put this winch on here that I wasn't going to be one of those guys that puts a winch on my van and never touches it. So a winch uh, just to look cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So actually, the first time that I got the van out, I came across uh, some very giant boulders in the middle of the trail that I was traveling down and was able to implement the winch. And since then, in the last few or three or four months, I've had the winch out probably half a dozen times using it. So it's become a tool, a very handy tool. Yeah. And my concept with building this van was to build the ultimate off-roading full-time livable overlanding machine. And now, of course, there's that great debate, you know, oh, is it the best off-roading machine, of course not. There's Land Cruiser and there's Toyota and you know all those other platforms for that, but they're not nearly as full-time livable. So yeah. of course it's a matter of finding that balance and that's been my goal. And if I'm gonna get myself out on the trail, I love to go out and do solo trips and I wanted to prepare myself with as much tools and equipment to recover myself. And the winch was one of the main, the, the main goals of getting on the on the van. I'm excited to go inside and take a look at the inside livability like you said, but what else have you done uh, exterior wise, chassis wise to this to make it so off-road capable? So yeah, of course we've got the winch. Um, that is with the California tuned off-road uh, bumper. It houses the um, Warren. It's a Xeon 12S Platinum series. So it's actually wireless, which is great as a solo uh, a guy out there, I can be either over by the obstacle winching or I can actually be behind the steering wheel winching. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been outfitted uh, here. And then also we've got the off-road lights, which are mounted here on the bumper. And also you can see them, of course, up on the top. Now, it seems to be a quite the trend to deck out your machine with as many lights as possible. <laughs> You've got a lot here. <laughs> and first off i definitely like having light when i need it yeah. and i tell you what having these lights on this has already saved my my rear several times mm -hmm. uh it, when it comes to traveling off road at night now not that it's actually ever planned to be out on the trail yeah. after dark but when you find yourselves in those inclement situations and perhaps something went wrong during the day and you got to get yourself to safety at night these lights have saved my my rear big time so 
my my theory is there's no such thing as too much light when it comes to off-roading at night. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. How about the uh, how about the suspension? Did you have to do anything to handle the weight or improve your off-road capabilities that way? Absolutely, of course. When it comes to uh, off-roading, ground clearance is a, a huge thing in, yeah. in getting in where you want to want to get. Now, when it comes to dealing with a big giant cargo van that's really meant to be delivering packages in inclement weather. Um, this thing definitely needed some help with it, the height. Mm -hmm. Now, the four-wheel drives already come from the factory about four inches higher than a two-wheel drive. Okay. And that's really just to fit the, uh, the running gear needed to be four-wheel drive underneath. Um, but Van Compass has actually developed a suspension and lift kit for it to take it even a step above that. So their kit lifts at another two inches. Uh, and with that, I'm actually able to get 35 inch wheels uh, and tires underneath it. And so I'm running the three uh, BFG KO2 all-terrain tires uh, at a 315-70 R17 size tire. And the yeah, tire gives you a little more ground clearance too. Yeah, the bigger tire helps with more uh, ground clearance. It also rolls over rougher terrain much easier than yeah. smaller tires. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely thankful I've put those tires to good use out on the trail for sure. I don't regret going that big on tires. The roof rack up on top has actually been one of the best upgrades onto the van. Of course, it gives you extra cargo space up top. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a spot to be able to house the lights. And of course, down the side, I've got a Fiamma S45S awning. Nice. And so I can deploy that if it's hot and sunny out or even raining. Uh, and who knows, maybe even when it's snowing. Uh, but the roof rack runs the full length front to back, also side to side. So it actually provides a nice big platform of being able to crawl up on top, uh, enjoy a meal, sit and enjoy a, a sunset from the top of your van. So Get a view, do a little filming from up there probably. Totally. Yeah, yeah we actually used it uh, on the Triumph shoot. We had a big 300 lens behind the red camera up there and we were getting some great shots up there. So. Nice. <laughs> this, I see this on some vans. This does not look factory. No. Yeah, and actually these right here are a very integral part of making this thing full-time livable. Uh, these right here are flare space flares. Uh, the one on the driver's side sticks out a little bit further than on the passenger side because the slider door actually has to slide past it. Okay. But the whole concept is, is that you can install these flares on each side and you gain an extra 10 inches of side to side space, which allows you to be able to sleep sideways in the van. Ah. So rather than having your bed running front to back, you can go side to side and you actually gain an extra 20 inches of space to make more use of in your living space. Got it. Um, so yeah, flare space, and then there's a whole bed system that goes along with that. And is but, this power? Yeah, so here this is a very dirty uh, shore power cap, but uh, anytime I'm in a camp area, we can uh, plug into shore power. Oh, so you got 30 amp service. Yep. Nice. And that'll charge my batteries, which we'll talk about here in a second on the inside. Thanks for watching our videos, but there is a lot more to Morton's on the move. For example, each week we like to find a little humor in camping and RVing and share it in a comic. Get the full collection for free by visiting the link in the description below or typing in mortonsonthemove.com backslash RV dash comics. One of my main goals when it came to setting this thing up for off-road and overlanding travel was having a full-size spare tire. Mm, so yeah. Um, it's an actual identical set to what's on the actual van. Um, and the main thing for that is that if you can imagine your miles down a rugged 4x4 trail and you come across a flat tire, the last thing you want to do is put your little donut tire on and try to crawl your way back out. Not so gonna work. We've got, got a full-size spare tire and of course the trash roo is nice for being able to uh, haul garbage out of the trail that you consume on the way. So I think we're gonna have to get ourselves one of those. I like that idea. <laughs> that is actually very, very handy. I use it quite a bit. Nice. It's uh, surprising. Um, also, before we open it up, uh, I discovered in traveling with the vanning and that I really enjoyed having my mountain bike with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely wanted a way to be able to carry that. However, with how I've got the back of the van built out, uh, I didn't want to have a hitch mount because I need access to the back of this all the time. I didn't want to be swinging the bike away. I didn't want to be removing the bike. So with this rack system, it actually swings with the whole entire uh, door system and just 
swings right out of the way and allows you quick, easy access to the back. Nice. And everybody, actually, I'm really surprised, is always curious about this, bo this box. I'll what is that box? Yeah, I'll go ahead and <laughs> What is in closer. that box? Uh, this really is just extra added storage. It's nice. kind of like a little garage locker. Um, I keep stuff like my mountain bike gear in here. This is all my recovery gear that goes along with the winch. Yep. Extra straps, shackles, snatch blocks, etc. cetera. Um, also even got a little uh, chainsaw. Ah, portable chainsaw. I actually just got this in the mail today from Amazon and nice. some other Overland guys that um, have been out in Jeeps, they highly recommended it. And there's been so many times where I've come across situations where I could have used a chainsaw. So, I, we carry a saw as well. I, I think it's an essential overland tool. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, that's the back box there. And then if we swing, do we want to get into the... Let's go inside. Let's take okay. a look. Yeah. Do we want to reshoot that since I ruined it? No, this is no? fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, we'll just swing both doors open here. And this just kind of opens up the whole rear of the van. Nice. Um, there again, that's where you can kind of see the bump outs from the flare spaces that we were seeing on sure. both sides. Sure, so basically it just makes the bed bigger. Yep. Nice. Yeah, and I'm six foot two and I can sleep sideways comfortably. Nice. And it actually works out really well. Um, and flare space designs the whole bed platform to fit in with those flares. The mattress comes from them, so it fits all these contours. So it fits in really nicely with that. Very neat. And what do we got um, going on down here? So down underneath the bed, this is what we always refer to in van life as the garage area. Okay. And of course there's a bunch of different things that you can do in there, but you can see how much I've got stored in here. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make all of this stuff accessible that runs all the way to the front. So essentially stuff like this, I'm able to pull out on slides and I can access everything that I've got on here. Very I mean, nice. You know, a couple cords of firewood. <laughs> All right. You got a lot um, of wood. <laughs> but, uh, you know, over here I've got like my, my camp table, my camera lenses, DeWalt electric tools, um, my fire pit, the luggable loo for those emergencies. Mm -hmm. But everything's just accessible very easily from that rather than having to crawl in, in the back. Very nice. And did you build all this yourself? Um, yeah, I actually spent some time in SketchUp, the 3D uh, design program. I'd never really used anything like that, so I gave myself a bit of a crash course and came up with the, the drawer system that all of this is housed on. Um, and I kind of took some notes from the Overland community and how they always build their slide-out drawers. Mm. They always have slide-out refrigerators, uh, slide-out kitchens, etc. Um, so that's what I did here on oh, 58 inch drawer slides is essentially a whole drawer, I'm sorry, kitchen system. And then this continues to oh my gosh, fold out there. Countertop. Yeah. And my main thing, just as everybody in a house always wants more counter space, right? In sure. the kitchen. Um, so these make great, uh, counter spaces to work on, but they also double as pantry storage. Oh, nice so that I could maintain having this counter space still there rather than a flip up lid. I use these hinges that, that flip up uh, the way that they do. Nice. And so and you've got little gas shocks on there. So even if you had some weight on there, it's probably yep. easy to lift up. Yep. Nice. Yep. And then this is a two burner cook partner stove, which is uh, very popular in the Overland world. They all have them because they're so robust. Nice. And uh, it's actually been really nice. It just runs off of propane. Um, and I just hook up one pound bottles and do my cooking right there like that. Nice. It's a heck of an outdoor kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And then of course there's this drawer that pulls out as well. More workspace here. Um, underneath there is all my tools, all my uh, deflating devices for airing down on the trail. Uh, a whole set of tools I can pretty much work on just about anything I might need out on the trail with the tools that I have here. Completely agree. It's tool selection is critical. It <laughs> is. Being yeah. out on the road. Yep. Um, and then all my cast iron because I on my channel I do a lot of campfire cooking in Dutch ovens, uh, cast iron skillets. So all that's all housed in here to be able to 
to work from. So Love it. I just really wanted to make the space in the garage as functional as possible. And as we know, living on the road, you know, every square inch, cubic inch of space is totally necessary. Here. Yeah. So it looks like we have one more big thing back here, which is your power system. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Well, for me, you know, basically I, I'm out here darn near running a full production with the YouTube channel, uh, with multiple cameras, drones, lighting, all sorts of battery electric powered equipment. Um, I needed a way to be out here and be self-sustained so that I can be out here longer producing more content because being out here in, in the great outdoors, this is what my subscribers come to watch. So part of, well, essentially everything that makes that possible is right here in the battery system. Uh, I've got six of the Battleborn GC2 batteries. Uh, each one of those is 100 amp hours and there's six of them. The reason I went with the GC2s is because of how nicely they link together in this small space. I can connect them all. Uh, yeah, everything in parallel on a set of bus bars. So yep. that uh, basically makes the ampacity like unlimited pretty yep. much. So. Yeah, so it's worked out really well. It keeps things nice and compact and clean. Um, everything, all the other components is uh, all mounted down here. All the wiring runs back in to the box to keep things nice and organized. And how do you charge it? It didn't look like you had any solar up top. Um, no, so I actually, at this point, I am wired for solar. Mm -hmm. um, there's wire all the way up to the top, so I'm prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, I did install a 280 amp external alternator or an auxiliary alternator on the engine. 280 amps, wow. 280 amps. Is that a secondary alternator then, auxiliary? Yep. yep. Wow, so, so that's dedicated just for the power system. Yep. Whoa. Yep. So that way I've got a little bit of redundancy. So I can leave my stock alternator dedicated to just making sure the van <clears throat> runs and operates. I don't have to worry about putting extra drain uh, mm -hmm. uh, strain on that. Uh, and then, yeah, that secondary alternator is dedicated straight to this. Wow. I've, I've got four amp uh, cables that run directly. F I'm, I've got four aught cables that run from the alternator directly back here to these batteries so it can handle the power. But honestly, that's the great thing about the lithium batteries is that they just, they'll take that much power. Yeah. Um, so with that, I'm not the type of um, camper that really comes out and sits anywhere for a number of days. I'm constantly traveling and exploring. So the van is running a lot of the time. So, yeah. so far I've found that it actually uh, keeps up with that more than keeps up with what well, I'm out here doing. Even with that much capacity, I'm running the engine for a short bit is going to give you yeah. quite a significant charge. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that seems like a really neat way to go. Are you using a DC to DC controller? How are you actually modulating the charge off the alternator? Well, I found that with a battery system of this size being 600 amp hours, uh, most uh, DC to DC chargers are running at about 50 amps, maybe 60. Yeah. And if I was limiting this battery setup to only a 60 amp charge, I would be charging forever. So mm -hmm. one of the great things about running this batteries and the lithium batteries is that they will ch take a large amount of charge. And so with that alternator putting out 280 amps, it's able to take it. And now the system is all set up with an external regulator. So there's a wake speed a charge controller that is set up in here and that manages the batteries and and shuts the alternator on and off as needed through the charge of the batteries got it so that's probably very in the field current of the alternator to create a charge or not based on what it needs yeah. that seems like a really neat setup and uh, also the fact you don't have to carry a generator you're using a efficient fueled engine that is got emissions controls on it so overall it seems like a really great way to charge batteries yeah it's it's been really really good um i haven't really felt the the need to add solar like i said it's there uh, if i do mm -hmm. the great thing is is it's kept my roof rack open for all that big space up there so that's nice yeah. um and then if if i am ever you know near shore power you plug in that's the the victron multi plus 3000 uh manages all of that but that's also the 
inverter. So that's supplying power to regular house style outlets here in the back. That's how I charge my, my bike. Uh, and then that also runs any of the camera equipment up front that needs AC power. So that's also a, an important integral part of the whole battery system. How much power do you typically use? How low do your batteries ever get? Um, so a couple days ago I was uh, in town and I basically had the van sit for two days. I had lights on, I had the heat going. I was um, charging my camera batteries and the laptop and I think I got it down to about 34%. Okay, so but, you have a lot of power, Yeah. more than you need. Do you actually, you said heat going, do you have electric heat or? Uh, actually, so I've got uh, diesel powered heat. Got it. So I've got one of the Amazon uh, knockoff heaters, which I've actually used for a number of years in the Volkswagen. Uh, back when I installed that system in the Volkswagen, I was on a, a very tight budget, and so I couldn't afford the $1,500 S-Bar uh, heaters that are very popular yeah. these days. Um, and I found that alternative, and I figured, heck, if it being works. $150, if it breaks you know, once a year, then I can afford to <laughs> you know, put 10 of them in here for the price of one of the other ones. And in the Volkswagen, it lasted three years without, or three seasons without a, a hiccup. So when it came to putting one in here, I opted Go with for what the you same. know. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So but it's a very comfortable heat. Uh, you know, it doesn't put any fumes out. There's no open flame. There's no heavy electric draw on it or anything. So nice. it's very efficient. Nice. Let's do it. Yep. Here we are inside the Sprinter. And like I said, my goal was to build the ultimate off-roading full-time livable overlanding machine and you know if I was the type that was just coming out on the weekends and in off-roading and camping here and there then I probably wouldn't have gone to this extent um, but the fact is that I live in this full time I wanted to feel somewhat homey and uh, so that's what I've done here just trying to make things comfortable and of course trying to maximize the storage now one thing that I did in in the process of the build is I pretty much got the shell done. I got the ceiling in, I got all the wiring done, the walls in, and then the bed platform. And then that was basically as far as I got. And then I went and spent mm, maybe five or six weeks just living in the van around town and getting to know the space and how I wanted it to, um, you know, lay out. And I'm glad that I did that because, you know, my idea of what I wanted actually changed maybe three or four different times. Um, and I actually landed back on something that was very similar to the layout of the Volkswagen Westfalia. Hmm. So the Westfalia just proved to work so well and maximize the floor space. And so that's what I've done here with the bench seat here and the counter space over here behind the, the driver's spot. Okay. Um, and then of course there's lots of details that I've really adapted to maximize things for how I use it, which is the YouTube, you know, film production and, and having all that camera gear stored away safe while I'm off road, but also accessible and fully charged at all times. Um, and that's thankful to this space here um, underneath the countertop. <clears throat> wow, um, <laughs> that's awesome. All the, all the camera gear is stored under here. All the outlets are here along the back wall. So everything's plugged in. Um, I've got AC outlets, I've got USB hubs, because let's face it, these days so much <laughs> charges off of USB. Yeah. Um, and it's all lined with closed cell foam down at the bottom, which helps protect it from the shock of so many bumpy roads. Yeah. But it also does such a good job of actually holding things in place. So, nice. Um, yeah, pretty much this is camera gear central right here, but the great thing is, is that it's all stowed away and you still have very usable countertops. Um, You've got a sink yeah. over here as well? Yeah. So while I didn't necessarily want to take up this space for cooking or anything like that, I did want to have the option of having a sink with running water. So um, able to turn that on, having running water and a nice usable sink if I've got to wash some dishes, uh, anything like that. That is all right there with that space. Very nice. And opted with that so that uh, I can still have it as functional counter space up here as well very good how much yep. water do you carry then and how do you carry the water so actually under this cabinet i've got um, a five gallon jerry can that is uh, stored down under here and again i just wanted it super simple i didn't want to get into a big 
uh, water system with plumbing running from the sure. back of the van. Um, I wanted to keep everything inside because one of the things that I do is a lot of winter camping on the channel. And so I didn't want to run into any possibilities of water freezing underneath the van if I'm mm. out in below zero temperatures. So yeah. everything's right here where it can remain heated. It's super simple. I can quick release the hoses off of it. I can pull the jug out, refill it, plug it back in, and we're back on the road. Nice. The great thing about the jerry can option is the fact that I can carry several other jerry cans of water in the back if I'm out on a longer trip and just swap out nice. the can. So, and there's a 12 volt pump installed under there that supplies water right here to the to the faucet. Very nice. And then um, running from there, I've got these overhead cabinets. Uh, this is from a good friend of mine, uh, Chris, over at Shucks and Vans. Uh, these are some cabinets that he started developing, and actually, these are prototypes. Um, my van's one of the first ones to have these installed. But the great thing is, is that the carcasses are actually built out of aluminum. And being that they are high up in the van, you want to try and minimize the amount of weight that's at the top. So they're super light, but they're also super rugged. And with this option, then you're able to face them with, you know, wood that matches the, the lower. But uh, tons of storage, like you could see, and it runs all the way through the back. So I have stuff like food, nice. items, clothes, electronics. Um, this little cubby is kind of the command center. I got the battery monitor, heater control, lights. Um, which also there again, uh, I'm able to install under cabinet lighting there and just makes things extra comfortable. Um, there again, like I said, at the beginning of the video, I like having plenty of lights. So I actually have 12, uh, lights running here on the ceiling and then another six down below. And the reason I went for that is mainly for filming at night. If I'm in here filming a segment, I've got plenty of light for the cameras. I was noticing it was playing bright in here already. Yeah. <laughs> Even during the day, it's cutting yeah. the cutting the shadow. Um, and then, of course, here, uh, a bench seat. This table actually swings around into this position for being able to work. Nice. You know, there'll be times where I'm 10, 12 hours a day editing right here. And so having a comfortable spot, you got, you know, views outside. I can swing the door open and enjoy the outdoors while I'm still here editing. So, of course, and then you can eat off of it. Um, it's great because underneath, and well, I wouldn't have to pull that out, but there's a big, huge storage under here. That's oh, where wow. I, that's all under there. And I have my clean laundry. Uh, Very nice. Under there. And I've actually, I've learned that I need on any of these forward facing cabinets that I need to do these latches for the off-roading. Oh, so stuff doesn't <laughs> fling forward. Yep. Yep. Because <laughs> uh, braking is the strongest force, pretty much. In, exactly. In any yeah. direction, right? And bouncing down yeah. inclines and stuff like that. So, yeah. also underneath here is the fridge unit. Oh, nice. Tucked away. So this is a 12 volt angle fridge. Um, inside of it is a dual compartment, so I can freeze have freezer stuff a fridge and, and bag freezer. of ice and this fridge here nice the cool thing about this stuff is it's all in baskets so you can pull it out to access it oh cool and the chest uh, fridges are super efficient because all your cold air stays in them down below having it open you it. pull out all yeah. that cold air that makes sense yep and this is running off the batteries 12 yep. volts you said yep very neat any electricity any electric stuff you see going on in here is all running off of the uh the battery system very good very neat so yeah and the power for this is in back so it just slides in and out with the um with the fridge and it's tucked away there nicely the great thing about that because i do so much um campfire cooking outside is that that fridge is easily accessible from where you're standing outside or of course inside versus that having sense. it over here in this cabinet you're having to crawl in the van just to get to to that, that. so that was one kind of goal with having it set up there very good and then you've got your comfortable bed in the back yes now with the westfalia the bed was super comfortable but it was a bed that you had to make every single you had to unfold it at night you know after your night's sleep then in the morning you're putting it all folding it away yeah. so i was really looking forward to having the full-time bed in the sprinter van so and you can just 
crash onto it when you need yeah. to. <laughs> After a long day of driving, you're, you're you know, spent 13 hour driving or whatever. Pass out. You just kind of crawl back here and pass out. And the nice. bed is so comfortable. It's uh, pretty unreal for sure. Excellent. Excellent. So one thing that I've really discovered for getting off grid out into the backcountry is having decent navigation. And with today's technology, there's such great uh, mapping options available that are right on stuff like your phone or iPads. And with GPS, you can know exactly where you're at at any given moment. And you can also zoom out and see, you know, your trails around you if you got to escape a, a particular area or a situation. So here on my iPad, I've got all the navigation apps that I possibly need. And it's great having it right here from the driver's seat because everything's accessible uh, right there at your fingertips. Um, so that has been absolutely huge. Um, I also like to map everywhere that I've gone. You know, mm. if I'm exploring a new trail, I'm going to map it so I can refer to it later for record. So it's nice that you can really keep track of everywhere you go. Um, up on the front dash there is a Garmin InReach Mini. Um, that's a satellite communication device, essentially. Um, you, can, you can't necessarily make phone calls on it, but you can send out messages uh, while you're completely off-grid anywhere in the world, um, which is great. You know, it gives you a little sense of security knowing that, you know, people are there to, uh, you know, message away if yeah. something goes wrong. Um, it's got SOS uh, features, so there's actually one button that I can push if it's an absolute emergency. I can hit that button, it'll notify um, search and rescue. So there again, it's just one thing, being a solo traveler out here that I've wanted to really prepare myself with. Um, every possible scenario that could uh, get you out of a situation safely. Neat. The last thing I'm looking at here is, looks like you've got kind of a light command console up here. Yeah, so right here on the Switch, the Switch Pro panel, I've got actual control over all of the lights right here from the driver's seat. So I can flip on different lights and uh, have control of everything right there. Nice. So how is driving this and how much does it weigh? So right now with everything built out in it, uh, on the road, I weigh in just under 10,000 pounds. I'm actually 9,920 uh, as I sit. And um, to be honest with you, it's pretty impressive how the thing handles still. The fact that this thing gets me up into the trails and we're not just talking trails, we're talking like Jeep trails, uh, and getting deep into the backcountry, I'm really blown away by how well it actually handles that kind of terrain. So nice. Mercedes has really made a very capable machine and I'm, I'm impressed with it so far. Yeah. So. And you have, you have selectable four wheel and you also have a low range, right? That is correct. Yeah. Nice. So it's got a low range button there. It's not super low range. Um, and especially since I have the 35 inch tires that does throw off my gear ratio a little of bit. So the low range definitely really helps in just getting out there and crawling on the trails. Just a kind of a high level, like, I mean, you're really blending the line of van life and, and overland. And I think everyone has kind of a different definition of overland travel. I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Is this overland? Well, it's certainly kind of the level that I've tried to push it to. Now, van life typically is people getting out and living full time in their vans. Mm -hmm. and it allows them the freedom and the opportunities to be out here closer to the things they like to do. If you're a rock climber or maybe you like paddle boarding or whatever, it allows you to get out here and enjoy that stuff. Um, whereas overland travel is perhaps getting a little bit more remote and more off-road emphasized. And I enjoy that aspect of things too. I really love getting out and exploring the path less traveled. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I've tried to build this van to do. And blur those lines between van life and overlanding you know of course m maybe more of the ultimate uh overlanding machine might be a toyota land cruiser and people are living in those full time and doing exceptionally well with that but it's not quite as comfortable as doing this especially when it comes to running a youtube channel so yeah it's been great bringing both of my passions together and really exploring the limits of what's possible in a 4x4 sprinter van because there's a lot of people out there that never take these things off the pavement. So that's one thing that I set out to do, having the audience of my YouTube channel is, let's let's explore the limits of what these Sprinter vans can actually do and let's put it on YouTube for people to enjoy. I, I think that uh, like to me, building out a vehicle like this is, 
it's it's using technology to our advantage to yeah. to be comfortable right i mean it, it exists and it's it's kind of fun to put it together and try these different things and try to really figure out a way to be out here and be able to enjoy it but be comfortable and continue to work for all of us that yeah. are out here doing working on the road right yeah well since we're on the subject of van life i think that's what van life really has done for people is allowed them to come out and you know work remotely and why it's not all fun and games, you're not just always out here hiking or exploring the backcountry. There's work to be done, but it allows this to be your office, you know, and I think that's been the unique thing of, of van life and just people getting out and traveling on the road and being able to work remotely. So the, the technology that we have to be able to do this nowadays is, is awesome. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like it used to be 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that camping meant that you had to come out here and, and rough it, and you had to be in a tent, and you had to be cold, and you know, it's like, now with with this type of vehicle travel and full-time living on the road, you know, it, it can actually be comfortable while you're out here enjoying it as well. Yeah. Well, Chad, thank you so much for the tour of the van. It's been incredible. Where can our viewers learn more and see your content? Uh, absolutely. So on YouTube, it's uh, Living the Van Life. And over on Instagram, I post a lot of content there. Sometimes a little more behind the scenes type stuff there on Instagram, but it's at Living the Van Life on Instagram as well. Well, there we go. Definitely check Chad out, Living the Van Life. LivingTheVanLife.com as well. Yes, we got a, a website with uh, just launched, uh, LivingTheVanLife.com. Excellent. Follow his adventures, figure out where he takes this incredible machine and we'll all see you down the road. Bye, everyone.